Welcome to Spidel's Federal Tax Minute. I'm your host, Catherine Sedan, and this week we're discussing the rules for self-rentals for the purposes of IRC Section 199A. Spidel has a two-hour on-demand webinar on Section 199A that covers specified service trades or businesses, aggregating multiple businesses, the wage limitation calculation, and more. For details and to register, go to spidel.com and click webinars. IRC Section 199A allows owners of pass-through entities to deduct up to 20% of qualified business income, which is the net income, gain, deductions, and loss from a qualified trade or business. A big question that came up when Section 199A was first enacted was whether rental income would qualify as income from a trade or business. The IRS has made it clear that rental income will qualify for a Section 199A deduction if the rental activity amounts to a trade or business under IRC Section 162, but not if the rental is only held for investment purposes. The IRS released Notice 2019-07, which provided a safe harbor for determining whether a taxpayer's rental activities would qualify as a trade or business. Under this safe harbor, the owner of the rental enterprise can take a Section 199A deduction if the owner spends 250 or more hours of rental service on the enterprise and meets other requirements. However, the safe harbor does not apply to triple net leases. But different rules apply to self-rentals. If real estate rental activities are rented or leased to a commonly controlled taxpayer and the rental property is used in an operating trade or business, which is a self-rental, then the rental real estate is treated as part of the operating business. For example, assume that Ava and Jerry are married and own a rental property. The property is rented to Ava's tax practice that she operates as an S-corporation. Because the rental property is a self-rental, it's treated as part of its related business, and so the property rented to Ava's tax practice is deemed to be a trader business. This means rental income from the property rented to Ava's tax practice is qualified business income. For Ava, the rental income is also specified service trader business income. When performing the Section 199A calculation, the qualified business income, W-2 wages, and wage limitation of the rental property and tax practice will be combined into a single trade or business. If a property is a self-rental but is leased under a triple net lease scenario, then the rental property is still deemed to be part of the commonly controlled operating business. This is because triple net leases are not precluded from being classified as a trade or business. Taxpayers are simply prevented from using the safe harbor under Notice 2019-07 to establish it. Likewise, if a self-rental is part of an operating business that's a trader business, then the 250-hour safe harbor is not required because the rental property is automatically deemed to be a trader business. Rental real estate that qualifies as a trader business generates non-specified service trader business qualified business income, and income from self-rentals is automatically deemed to be a trader business. Some practitioners have asked whether this means that owners of a specified service trader business can rent space to that business and generate non-specified service trader business qualified business income. And the answer is not exactly. This is because the operating business is a specified service trader business and the rental income generated from the self-rental is also income from a specified service trader business, but only as to the related parties. The self-rental rules apply not only to real property rentals, as discussed here, but also to the rental or licensing of tangible and intangible property. Spidel's 2023 Summer Tax Webinar will cover partnership and S-corporation issues such as basis calculations and adjustments, S-corporation proportionate distribution rules, W-2 and K-1 reporting rules, and more. For a full list of topics and to register, go to spidel.com and click webinars. That's all for this week. Join us next time for another episode of Spidel's Federal Tax Minute.